In part one, we took a quick look at the T962 reflow oven. Today, we'll finish it up with a complete review and tear down of this unit. Welcome back, guys. We already took a look and did the unboxing on this, but before we go to use it, we've got to tear it down. And if you get one of these, you need to do the same and make sure inside we don't have some nasty surprises. We're going to start off, plug it in, and let's just make sure it works out of the box. And I'll admit, I have already done this, and I ran the heater for a few minutes just to make sure everything worked, and it did. We verified that. I'm not going to let it run the heater here. I'm going to shut it off so we don't get it too hot. And we're going to go ahead and tear it down and make sure we don't have any surprises in here that other people have found. So we start off, unplug the unit. We're going to go to the back side here. There's going to be some hardware to remove. Just a bunch of Phillips screws, nothing crazy here. QC pass sticker. You got to go. We'll start off by pulling all these and see what we got. Now I'm not familiar with this unit because I've never had it apart before, but I'm assuming we only need to take the hardware around the top out and probably something on the front. Maybe these ones across the middle too. I'm not sure. case splits. On the underside of the drawer we've got some fasteners as well. Just Phillips screws. Alrighty. Any luck. This front cover should slide out. And it has. Here's the grand reveal. Are we going to find what I think we're going to find in here? We are. This is why you have to take these apart. This is a little bit foolish. This is masking tape. Just some type of paper masking tape. Absolutely atrocious idea in an oven. That stuff will get hot and melt and stink and burn. So other users have reported. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to strip all of this off. And we're going to replace this with uh, a capped on tape. Um, I would like to just leave it aluminum, but I think the reason that they've done this is because of the electronics right above it. There's a chance of short. Uh, if you have the aluminum exposed, that's what I, when I watch the other videos, I'm like, why don't they, why don't they just leave it alone? But I think this is here just strictly for short prevention. So I think what we'll do is use some capped on tape, Any, anything but paper. So let's go ahead. I'll cut back when I've got this sort of sorted out. All right. Well, after some time of cursing, I'm left with a, a pile of masking tape, a whole bunch of ends of capped on and one nicely taped unit tip this is uh this is capped on tape it's a high temperature tape this is cheap capped on tape from ebay no name brand don't buy it go through find something with reviews that uh the people are standing behind because this cheap stuff it just rips constantly as you know in the lab i like saving money whenever i can this is not one place to do it it's just frustrating and the stuff is just not worth saving a few bucks this tape is expensive to buy and it's worth buying something that works all right i think we're in good shape up top we've got the PCBs. Not much to see here. Everything's held on with some caulking. Um, some kind of a... Yeah, it just looks like plumber's caulking to be honest. Wires are kind of how you doing here. They're kind of laid out. But at least they've, they've gone ahead and stuck things down. Overall, I don't see anything that needs immediate attention in here. 
Alrighty, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've capped on taped my uh, K-Type thermocouple down. I'm doing a little different than other videos. Too many people fastened it right to this grill, and I don't think that's right because the temperature of our board is not going to be equal to that grill because we do have infrared heating. And I've got it hooked up to my Fluke, and we're just going to check this out. You're going to see it live with me. We'll run it through a profile. We'll pick this one. That's nice and low. Let's check it out. Let's hit F4, which is probably going to bounce, but it's good. And then let's just hit go. With any luck, we should start heating. Our target is 47 already. Internal temp showing 28, and the fluke is saying a little lower than that, but not far off. Not far off at all. Way, way closer than other videos I've seen. People who uh, stuck that thermocouple right down had massive disparities, like 30 plus degrees Celsius. And I don't think that's the case, but we'll find out here once we get a little higher in the range. We'll let this go. You can see down the left, you can see our cursor starting to track up, and it's going to attempt to follow this reflow curve. And we're getting a little further off now, or over 10 degrees off now, so. Maybe there is something to it. We uh, overshot to 90 some odd and it's only saying 78. So sure enough, the modifications with the new firmware and the new temperature compensation and monitoring, probably a good idea. But in the interim, for me, I can just make do with knowing how far it is off. And this video is going to let me see that. So just off camera, the fan has come on. My bad for not including that, but uh, we're dropping in temp. So we're getting a steady 20 degree off here. So I guess, long story short, if you were using this to reflow something critical, well, you might want to do the mods. And how do we make this thing be quiet? Like that, I guess. All right, cool. Let's see if it'll actually reflow something. Alrighty, what we've got is some N MG chemicals. This should be SN63, so it's a 6337 solder paste. We've got one of my random Osh Park boards. This is for my gas sensor uh, grenade project, and just some random uh, 0805 SMD components. I'm gonna go ahead and Stick a couple on here. Into the oven we go. Not my best work with the solder paste. I just took it out of the fridge. My bad. All right, wave one seems to be the popular one, but I don't like how hot that is. Hmm, ah. Wave one's supposed to be the one. F4, okay, English, and we'll hit go. And we'll come back and see if we have a reflowed board. If I didn't mention it before, it wasn't uh, it wasn't that much smell off of this thing at all. Just a little bit at the end of the last cycle. So I think I'm in good shape. We'll give it a go if it works. Well, we'll see how my non-SMD board did, and the results are the lack of solder was not good because, uh, well, this is not an SMD board. These are for through-hole components, but it worked perfect. The board is not damaged, even though the temperature overshoots were pretty much extreme. Uh, not enough solder on these, but they are indeed reflowed. This corner you can see is actually uh, the one where I had 
quite a bit of excess, or so I thought, but I forgot that it's all going to flow down through the hole. And sure enough, it's reflowed perfect. Absolutely fantastic. I am super happy about this. Uh, now to try it out on some real SMG boards when I get them. I don't have any here. Everything has holes. So we'll give it a try again in an upcoming video with a real board and manufacture some stuff. Click a thumbs up on this video if you like these kind of projects, guys. It really, really helps the channel. Good luck in all your electronics ventures. Check out my Patreon link below and my Discord link below. I'd love to get chatting with you guys. Let me know what you guys are building. Let me know if you guys are interested in getting one of these links down below. Talk to you guys soon. Cheers.